In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Line tab in Digital Scrapbook Artist 2. So over here, I just have a quick shape rectangle that I've color filled blue, outlined in red. And over here, I just took the pencil icon, which is right over here. I held down the shift key on my keyboard, held down my left mouse button, and I drew a nice straight line. And then I outlined that in red. Now I'm going to go over to my line tab, and I'm going to have some fun with these two images. The first one I'm going to click on, and I'd actually like to make my outline a little bit thicker. So to do that, while well, my image is selected, I'm going to go right over here and drag this over to the right hand side. You can see that the outline is now much thicker and if I go over to the very first button here called None, when I click on it, it does appear as if my outline is completely gone. In actuality, it's still there, it's just the color was turned off. If I want to put it back on, all I do is I go right over here and click on the solid line. Now you can see my outline has returned. Another thing that I can do is move the offset. The offset would allow you to take the outline and either move it off of your image or move it into the middle of your image. It's really nice when you're working with the embroidery brushes and the stitching because you can get the stitching on the inside or on the outside. You can use it for other features as well. To do that, just make sure that your image is selected and then what you want to do is go over here to Offset. There's a little arrow that points to the right hand side, just left click on that and underneath you're going to see a slider. If you move it to the left hand side, you're going to notice that your outline is now going to come off of your image and if you move it to the right hand side it's going to go into your image. Now at any time you can also play with the up and down arrows over here. You can increase the numbers to make it go smaller or larger. You can also manually type in the points that you'd like and if you just want to return this right back to where it was just make sure that this area is selected, your image is selected and type in the number 0 on your keyboard and press the enter key. And now your offset is right back to where it started from. Another thing that you can do is you can separate the outline from your image. But before we do that, I'm just going to make the outline just a little bit thicker. And this time what I'd like to do is place a check mark beside the word behind. When you do that, you're actually taking your outline and you're placing it behind your image. If you want to make your outline come back to the front, you just remove the check mark. If at any time you want to separate your outline completely from your image, make sure that it is selected and then on your mouse you're going to right click once, go down the list and go to detach as new item, move over and left click on the word line. Now you can click once off of your image and when you now move this, you'll see that your outline is now detached from your fill line. Next I'm just going to go to the top of the screen and undo this so it's right back to where it was. Now you're going to see that I've got these four corners. If I click on this image to select it and I click on the very first one called the bevel join, you'll see that it cuts a little bit in each section. If I click on this again and now go into my sharp join, again we have the nice four corners. And then finally if I click on this one more time, and this time I'm going to click on rounded join, I have these nice rounded corners. Now the way that this actually works is depending on how these lines are connected to each other, you've got your limit right over here. Limit is the extension where two lines meet, such as a corner. So if they both fall in that same sort of limit, then you'll end up with a nice sharp corner. And if they don't meet in the same limit, well then of course you're not going to get a nice sharp corner. It's going to be pretty flat. When you have a sharp corner at that time, you can round it and you can cut off the edge a little bit if you wanted to. All right, so now let's go into the next portion over here. If I were to keep this selected, and let's say I'm going to try to click on the cap buttons, you're not going to notice anything. And that's because it's not going to work on a closed image. It's going to work on an image that's not closed. So an image with just lines. I'm just going to make this a little bit thicker so that we can see it better. And currently, the way that I have this selected, you can see that it has a nice round corner. That's because I'm using the very first feature here called the rounded line cap. 
While my line is still selected, if I click on the next one called the extended line cap, you can see that now I've got a straight line, but it looks as if two scissors came at either end and chopped it off. If I click on this again, and I now decide that I want to maybe make it a flat line cap, it's just going to shorten it just a little bit, but I still have a nice sharp edge. Now another thing that you can do that's really fun, let's just make this a little bit thinner, is you can go over here and you can play with the dashed lines. Now the dashed lines will let you create any kind of dashes you want. So if you want to just make a dash that's a little bit smaller, you would just move this down. You could also pull over here and you could try out some of the different settings that automatically come with the software. Or if you want to create your own dashes, it's really easy to do. Just click on the pull down tab and then click on custom dash. Next you're going to see that there's a little slider over here. Just move this little slider all the way to the right hand side and when you do that you're going to notice that your line is going to have the exact same effect as what's currently in your pattern. If you decide that you want to then place another black dot, all you do is you click on it. Then you go to your next section and click on it and maybe you want to skip a few maybe fill these in. Once you're happy with it, this is your new dash that you've created. Another thing you can do is while your dash is selected, you can easily go over here and you can change the front of your dash and the back of your dash to look completely different. Now when I'm making certain things that I want people to cut, I actually like to just take a line, so I'll just click on this, I like to go down to the scissors icon, and just left click on it, and then go to the other end of the line and click on the other scissors icon. And then I just like to use the dash right over here. I'll make this a little bit smaller. And there I have a nice line that tells anyone who sees it that if you take your scissors, you can cut along the dash lines. So you can play around with those features. You can also use the offset for your dash lines. Now another thing you can do is while you've got your line selected, you can go right back over here and you can turn that into a straight line. And if you don't want these little scissors at the end, just go over here and pull it all the way back up to the top and now you come right back to a nice straight line. Over here you've got your double line. If you click on that once, and let's just make this a little bit bigger, you can see that you instantly have two lines. And this looks pretty nice if you're creating a frame. So I'm just going to click on this, and I'm going to curve this just a little bit. And now I'm going to click on my double lines. Also, if you have a closed shape with an outline that you want to resize, but you want to keep both the outline and the image in proportion, then just place a check mark beside scale before you resize your image. Over here, I'm just going to click on this line again, and I'm going to click on the calligraphy brush. When I click off of it, it doesn't really look like there's much to see, but if I click on it again and click on edit points, and I'm just going to move this sort of up in the air, when I click off of it, you can see I've got this thin beginning of a line, and then it gets much thicker, just as a natural calligraphy brush would. So you can play with those settings as well. And then I'm just going to click on this, go to the next brush, which is called your stroke. And when you click on that, you're instantly in your brushes, and currently I'm in my embroidery brushes. So while this is selected, I can easily make this bigger, or I can make this smaller. And finally, you can go over here and you can press on your edge brush. And your edge brush will take you right into your edges. You can select the edge that you'd like to use. And of course, you can make it thicker or thinner. And at any time, if you want to change the color, just go over here to color. And you're going to send color outline to the front. And then just color it any color you want. Have some fun playing with your line tab. You can come up with some really nice looks. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching.